Hello, this is the third video in the series of introducing the tools for uh, ECEN 2350. And in this video, we will cover Model Sim Simulation tool. The Model Sim Simulation tool uh, was downloaded and installed as part of Quartus, but it actually runs independent of Quartus. And we will just use the, uh, the Verilog files uh, themselves, uh, not any of the other uh, support programs or project files that are in Quartus. Uh, so what I show here is I've copied the, the golden top.v main Verilog file that we've used on the Quartus project. I've copied it to a new directory and I've written a second program called uh, golden top underscore TB, which is a test bench file. And if we go over to model sim, which I launched already, um, we can create a project. So if we go to new project, and we'll just call this uh, golden TB for test bench. And We'll choose the golden top sim directory and we'll create a project there. And then we can add existing files. So if we go to this directory, this should be, we, we select both of these files and they will be added to our project. So now we see them over here and we'll close this. And we can look at golden top. Um, so I have both of these files up in a, I use Notepad++ as an editor, and so I can look at them side by side. So on the right, we have the same uh, program that we used before, the golden top.v with our assignments. On the left, I'll walk through this test bench file, and you can download this uh, through the class uh, on Canvas. But We've created a top-level module um, which has no inputs or outputs since it's a test bench. Everything we'll do is inside of this. But we'll declare a lot of internal signals, which every signal that's in golden top, we have to declare at the top level here. And um, any file that any signal that we're driving, we need to use the reg construct. Otherwise, uh, in uh, inputs or outputs that we're not driving uh, at the top level, we can use the wire construct. Now we instantiate our uh, golden top module, and we just route through all of the signals. And we're going to call that golden top underscore dut. Now I've created an initial uh, sequential uh, assignment block, which you can only do, you can only use this initial block in simulation, and we will just hardwire uh, the, the keys, the, the momentary push buttons and the two position switches for the, uh, for the signals that we want to test. And I've, if you look through this, I've created uh, every possible input combination so that we can do a full test of all of our signals. So if you look through what we're actually doing is this pound 100 is declares that we're going to wait 100 time units, which should be a nanosecond on this uh, simulation. And um, so it's you can think of this as this is the se sequence like you were, if you were manually testing, you would be pressing pressing key zero. Uh, now remember this is active low, so key zero pressing it goes to zero, and then re we'd release, and then we'd wait a hundred nanoseconds. We release key zero, uh, press key one, uh, then we wait another hundred nanoseconds. We press both of them, etc. So that's our simulation. Now, if we go back over to model sim, we want to simulate. Uh, first, we need to compile this. So if we compile all, we can see that both of those Verilog files was compiled successfully. 
Now we will go up to the simulation and start our simulation. And you'll see that we've created a work directory. So there's a lot of other items in that have already been compiled by Altera that are, have, that are already in a library. And we're not going to worry about those. But under the work directory, here's our uh, units, our modules. So let's just pick the top level module. And so now we can see it's launched the simulator. And over on the right, we can see all of our signals that, uh, that we declared at that top level. And since we're only interested in a subset of them, I'm going to highlight just the, the signals that we've been working with, the, the seven segment LED, the input keys, and the output LED. And I'm going to right click and add them to a wave. And so this wave is, um, pull this up. The wave is where we can actually see our outputs, the output window. And I'm just showing you, you know, there's multiple ways to run this tool, and I'm just showing you one way. Um, so you, now we can see all of our, our uh, signals. We can see them. This means that they're multi-bit. We can change the radix if we want to view them as hexadecimal. We can do that. Um, there's a lot of ways you can make this look a little bit easy, uh, a little bit cleaner. Um, and we can open up, for example, our keys and our LEDs. We can look at the individual signals. So now let's actually run the simulation. So I'm going to go back, and you can see in the lower left we have. Uh, at a command window so we can type commands. So I'm going to run this for two microseconds. I'm going to use two US for microseconds. So now it's run that simulation. I'll go back here and we can see that it's now done something. So let's, uh, let's I'm right clicking on this and I'm going to zoom full. So now we can actually see that it's done something with these signals and we need to look, inspect this manually to see if it's done what we wanted. Um, so now we can see here with the keys, I'm going to zoom in. You can hit the I button to zoom in and the O button to zoom out, uh, to zoom out O key and I key. Um, so we can see that it's indeed executing these top level push button keys the way we want. Um, and the switch down here uh, the lowest level switches are also doing it. Now you see red on this key uh, under the SW. That's because there's really 10 uh, switch switches on our board. And in simulation, we, we didn't do anything with those upper eight most significant bits, um, which doesn't really matter for our simulation right now. Um, but in a minute, I'll show you how we can clean that up. Um, so looking at the LED, uh, LED 0, if we go back to our uh, simulation, uh, I mean our uh, Verilog code, LED 0 is driven by SW0 and SW1 as an AND gate. So LED 0, let's go back to our wave window, LED 0 is assigned to the switch output. So I'm going to just drag that down so we can look at our output uh, right next to our two switch inputs. And um, it's an AND gate. So this output should only be high when the two inputs are high. And indeed, that's the case. So we validated that uh, by inspection of our simulation. Likewise, let's look at our uh, OR gate uh, output from our momentary switches. And you have to remember that these are inverted, uh, active low. And so in this case, the only time LED should be low is when both switches are high. Um, now we could, we could change our test logic to make this uh, a little easier to read. But uh, by inspection, we can tell that this is also doing what we want. Now, finally, I want to clean up my red just because that doesn't look very good. Um, sometimes that's confusing when you see red. So let's go back to our uh, 
our inputs, uh, our, our initial block. And these switches, I've only declared switches 0 and 1. So now let's update this to declare, to set all 10 switches to 0 at the beginning. So we can just change that to 10. I'm going to save that. Now we can go back to the wave window. And if you look, there's a lot of different options up here uh, in, the, in this main toolbar. But if you look over here, I'm going to mouse over, there's something called compile all. So right, we don't have to jump back and forth to the main uh, model sim window when we make uh, to recompile. So I'm going to hit recompile all. Now if we go over, we can see that it, that it did recompile with no errors. And if you look at, here's a nanosecond window. So this is, defines our time step. To the left of that is a restart button. So we'll, we'll hit that, and that'll clear the current simulation. So now we're starting again, but all of our window settings are the same. And if you look to the right of this, you can single step. And so there's different options. So I'm going to run... Uh, 100 nanoseconds at a time and you can see now that these uh, these other switches uh, have defaulted to zero so our red lines are gone and our simulation still works so this should give you a good introduction to sim uh, to model sim again there's a lot more features there's a lot more you can do there's you can run this through scripts and all kinds of things but this is a good basic introduction thanks